So, hi everyone. Welcome to uh, lecture 20 of Manufacturing Engineering 1. This is week 10. Um, so, as you can see here in the in the uh, in the first page, uh, the Professor Smith is uh, delivering forming uh, forming lectures and has prepared, has prepared these slides. But I will uh, be presenting this particular one. My name is Anastasia Vasiliou. Some of you might have uh, might know me through the tutorials. So, so lecture twenty is the second uh, part of uh, on deep drawing. Um, there and I think this uh, this uh, this is the final uh, lecture on forming processes. Uh, so um, just a couple of things. Uh, there is a dropping session for uh, questions on this Wednesday at six p.m. So between six p.m. and seven, Professor Smith will be online and available to uh, have a discussion with you and uh, answer questions. Um, and there will be a tutorial covering forming processes uh, in the first week of May. I think this is the uh, on the 6th of May. So um, I don't want to take much of your time. Let me um, uh, start with the presentation. So let's recap on what was in lecture 19, which was part one of sorry. Yes, so you covered the main deformation uh, zones in a cylindrical cup during the deep drawing process and how thickening, bending and stretching uh, occur. And then uh, you covered, you talked about the ironing process and how it is related to the radial clearance between punch and the die. Deep drawing distortion parameters such as reduction and draw ratio were uh, covered. And these are important uh, parameters we will need to uh, recall during this uh, presentation as well. Uh, approximate equation for estimating either the cap height or the blank diameter uh, was also uh, included. And uh, you mentioned phenomena such as the earring, wrinkling, and tearing. So to, uh, for today's uh, lecture, we are going to focus uh, in more detail in two defects. like uh, These uh, are the wrinkling and the tearing defects. Um, we will talk about the compromises required to avoid uh, these uh, both uh, from occurring. And the, um, we will talk about uh, the redrawing process and we will conclude with a deep drawing exercise. So, just uh, as we said, a recap, uh, deep drawing is a consider, um, forming process, which means that uh, redistribute, which you form material by redistributing raw material under the uh, action of applied forces. And in particular, deep drawing as a process, um, you take a sheet, of, a, a sheet of metal and you stretch it um, and then you punch it to its uh, final part shape. So, uh, what we see in this picture here is, um, is a circular uh, sheet of, uh, of material um, which we want to draw into uh, the shape of a cup. And as we said, wrinkling uh, is, um, is something that can happen. And we, we can see here a wrinkled flange. And the reason is, uh, we, we can see here, so this 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 uh, photo shows a wrinkled flange which is um, which is a ha a partially let's say drawn, and the wrinkle why wrinkling the reason why wrinkling occurs is because of the stress state that um, you generate when you uh, pull the material uh, down into the into uh, the, the die, and we are generating compressive hoop stresses, uh, meaning uh, stress around the circumference of the. Uh, of the of, of the plate of the of the blank, and uh, this means that this can result into buckling. In other words, out of, you can end up having out of plane deformation. So buckling particularly occurs when we have um, stresses on thin uh, pieces of metal, and we can think of that as. As if we had a piece, a, a piece of um, not a foil. Let's say let, foil can plastically deform very easily. Let's say a piece of metal of, of paper, and if we apply tension on that, nothing will happen. It might tear, but later on, but nothing will happen. But if we apply uh, compressive stress, then it will buckle. 
So this is exactly what will happen here in part of the metal that you can say it's distorted. So these stresses develop because the material occupies a decreasing circumference as it um, it's drawn radially inwards. And as we said, yeah, the last uh, bullet is uh, that buckling, uh, uh, wrinkling is a buckling phenomenon. So is that important? So as the material is drawn radially inwards, compressive hoof stress develops circumferentially around the flange. So it's repetition just to uh, remind that the flange is uh, insufficiently supported normal to its surface. Then the material will buckle due to these compressive stresses. So it's, um, and then, yeah, you can see here in the figure, the direction of the compressive stresses. And then this is the new thing uh, I would like to introduce here. So there is a thing called blank holder, which can be used to provide restraining pressure normal to the plants. In other words, it's a tooling uh, that can be um, uh, used to push uh, and squash that uh, flange back uh, and prevent it from, um, uh, from buckling, from um, wrinkling. So, let me see. Yes. And here you can see there is a, another figure. We can, you can see the whole setup. So again, you, we can see this uh, blank, um, which is all, uh, draw, I mean, pushed using uh, the punch into shape. Uh, and we have the die uh, that gives the shape to the, to the blank. And then this uh, blue, um, uh, the blue uh, part is the blank holder. Uh, and this is uh, these red arrows demonstrate the holding force that can be applied. So again, the, imagine this uh, this piece of material attempting to buckle upwards, and then this blank holder stops it by is uh, by pushing down. So, uh, sorry, give me one second. So this is the um, let's talk about the effect of uh, wrinkling. So. Again, as we said, wrinkling is a is a complication. It's not, it's something uh, definitely undesirable. The thing is, um, uh, if 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 the drawing process is allowed to continue after wrinkles have appeared in the plants, then defective cap walls will result. And this is a sketch that demonstrates that. So we see here this. Um, we are we are halfway through the the draw. Uh, process of this this uh, part here, and wrinkles have started appearing there. And then, if if one continues to uh, to push down hard to uh, to to continue with the process, then uh, more forces are applied, more friction is generated, which means that you you apply a bigger load to push down. But then you don't want that to to happen. And then you know trying to prevent sometimes wrinkling from continuing, you end up having these um, wrinkles uh, at the end of the final part. So this looks like um, a muffin cake, totally distorted. And uh, it's, a, you can, you know, it's a component that is not functional. Um, the other thing that we, we can consider as well is um, if, you, if, you pull, um, uh, if you if you pull wrinkled material downwards, and I will write directly, there was a very nice image in the previous lecture that Professor Smith presented with a close up of this gap here in between the uh, the material and the and, and the dial, let's say. So this corner around here, it's and and also around here, maybe around. Here, sorry, the picture was around there. I'm talking about this corner around there. Sorry. So you want. If, if the material is um, is uniform, you need to apply a certain, um, a certain force and pull it nice uh, around the corner and down this uh, small cap formed in, in there. Um, but then in, consider if the material is wavy, as, it, as is here in the picture, then getting that material through the gap um, requires more effort. The forces will go up, more friction, uh, uh, you will get more. We will get more friction, and then the tool wear involved will get damaged uh, quickly, faster. And yes, uh, and I think so. 
And then, yes, uh, tooling equipment for drawing, uh, deep drawing process is um, considered consumable in the sense that sometimes we might need to take this uh, away and regrind it and replace it. However, this tooling equipment is supposed to last for thousands of uh, operation cycles. So yeah, this is not supposed to, to happen. So um, let's see here now how this um, can be prevented in a, you know, in practice. And we have here two pictures, uh, one on the left demonstrating uh, the deep drawing process of, uh, of the thick sheet of, uh, of, of metal. And on the right, it's a thinner one. So, um, so when we have the thicker, thicker material, then uh, this is more resistant to buckling. And maybe I should uh, start showing the, the blankets. So the relatively thick sheets blank do not require a holding force to prevent them from wrinkling. And this is situation, so in all, in this case, you only have one force applied, which is the punch. Um, and for that reason, the whole assembly is more simple. Uh, and this uh, tooling um, uh, setup, let's say, is called simple single acting. Um, as you see here. Uh, however, when we are moving, uh, so so simple single acting is a more simple scenario, let's say, very straightforward. However, it doesn't allow to go to very uh, thin materials. So in such case, as you can imagine, we have the action of the the force of the punch and the uh, the the forces from the um, from the uh, blanket. So uh, in this case, this uh, tooling is called double acting. And yes, it is more complicated, but uh, it allows us to, to, to go uh, to, to thinner uh, material. So let's uh, go, uh, let's have a look again on, the, on this uh, very figure again. And then, uh, yeah, a few, uh, bits of information concerning the types of the blank holder. So the most common type is control uh, pressure type. The holding force is controlled by springs or a hydraulic, uh, hydraulic supply. Hydraulic systems are the most common, as you can imagine, and it makes sense. And um, increasing the blank holder pressure reduces the incidence of wrinkling. Uh, and we do have some control over that. And reducing lubrication of the blank increases frictional forces, and then uh, that also reduces the, the wrinkling. So yeah, this is uh, in practice. Sorry, I'm getting a bit distracted by the uh, panel. Okay. And then let's have a look on the formation of tearing uh, defects now. So there is so apart from the wrinkling, which was a major um, of major concern, as we uh, as we just described, there is a very uh, a second um, defect that is uh, of major concern that we will go through in this in this uh, presentation, and this is the one shown on the um, on the photograph here, and this defect is called tearing. So. In this in this case, we we uh, we have the case of a, a circular sheet of material again, which we try to draw uh, a cap from, and uh, you can see here the end has come off as if somebody cut it, you know, using a knife. But this no, this is just happened on its own. It's called tearing, uh, and the problem is the uh, variation in the wall thick the wall thickness. So again, as you see here, we have two situations where around the corner, the material uh, has got different, different thickness than the original, uh, the original material, all the material which is in steady state condition around here. So the, the problem is that when it gets too thin, then you can neck and uh, by doing so, you cannot, and, and once you are, and you know, you, you get a neck when, uh, because you're approaching the ultimate tens tensile strength of the material, the UTS. And then, yeah, if you try to draw, uh, you know, this um, too much, this neck gets created, which is an instability. The thickness goes down very rapidly then, and from a noise, and, and, and this creates, generates a localized, um, uh, area uh, and it tears. So, as, as you see, 
uh, tearing is associated with uh, tensile stress and thin sections. Uh, yeah, and we can recall the cold thickness profile from the last uh, lecture. So there is a very important um, piece of information stated in this slide. Uh, and this is that there is um, a limit. So there is a um, tearing failure occurs at the limiting draw ratio, which is called drawability. And this is the definition. So diameter of the blank over the diameter of the punch, D not uh, over D1. And then this is the limit of how much draw you can do uh, yeah, before, before the, the end comes off, as we said. So yeah, this, is, this actually is how much deformation you can put in a, a single operation. Uh, and this drawability normally uh, ranges between the values of 1.6 to 2.2. And yeah, we, I'm sorry, this is uh, a definition that we need to, a concept we need to uh, remember and uh, we will repeat in the uh, slides to follow. So let's, um, I will put up this slide now. And this shows the tearing due to poor tilling design. So. As you can imagine from what I just uh, I, I mentioned, the tearing can happen and is affected by the um, you know is limited by the the material and the uh, ultimate uh, tensile strength of the material. However, there are a few things one could do to prevent it from happening, and this is adjusting the design of the um, of the of the tooling. Uh, uh, that is used. So tears can occur due to a small punch corner radius or a small die corner radius as shown here in the picture. So you can see here, um, you can either adjust the die or the punch corner to uh, minimize tearing. And the fundamental limitation remains durability, as we said, but this, since this is related to the material and the mechanical properties of the, of the material we are discussing, but there is a range that the you know the design affects can affect and prevent tearing from happening. Um, so now, for a given sheet thickness, the drawability increases with. Uh, this is a graph actually showing that the drawability increases with um, um, in both punch edge radius and die edge radius. So this is the range uh, over which one could have um, a go and, and affect the, the, the drawability. And you can see here, the graph is uh, on, the, on the horizontal axis is the die edge radius over the metal thickness and the vertical axis here is the drawability. And the different lines demonstrate, uh, corresponds to punch edge radius over metal thickness. So you can see if one affects the punch edge radius and the die edge radius as we saw uh, in the figure before, you can have an effect and improve the durability. It's not a linear relation, but it's yeah. It, but still, there is there is a a, a limitation uh, a, a plateau over there. So this is all useful information to to know. And yeah, again, it saturates. It's uh, it reaches a, a limit. So moving on to the to the to the next slide. Um, so um, correctly designed tooling requires that the edge of radius of the oh, give me a second, sorry, at the radius of the pants or die should not be too sharp. Once the tooling is apparent or is uh, appropriately designed, then the drawability, or else, the, as we said, the limiting draw ratio remains limiting. So this is the overall limit, and we cannot uh, exceed a draw ratio between 1.6 and uh, 2.2 in a single drawing operation. So the risk of tearing may also be minimized by increasing the amount of lubrication, by reducing the black hold, the blank holder pressure. Uh, and then when you have a large radii may not be compatible with the final part design. So this is something that one uh, should uh, consider. So, uh, Apologies, I just have some uh, overlapping of my uh, screen, uh, which I will try 
So, yeah, so the next uh, slide is on compromising uh, operating conditions to avoid both wrinkling and, and tearing. And I got, again, these two uh, figures from, from previously. Uh, so what this slide is uh, supposed to say is that um, we have two problems, two um, failing mechanisms occurring at the same time. And there might be some competition, let's say. So we have to make sure we avoid both. Avoid both. So wrinkling can be avoided by increasing the blank holder pressure and reducing the amount of lubrication. Okay. Tearing may be uh, overcome by reducing the blank holder pressure and increasing the amount of uh, lubrication. So you see, there is already conflict there. We have so, and then clearly compromise may be needed to optimize the final part quality. So you know you. In, let's say increase lubrication to uh, prevent tearing, but then uh, you, it has got a detrimental effect to wrinkling. So compromise is required, um, and we need to have this uh, thing in mind. Uh, but yet we need to highlight the drawability remains the fundamental limit. So this is uh, there is no we don't bypass the drawability limit uh, using these uh, considerations. Let's say. So um, let's see. So in this in this figure here, it's uh, called solving the drawability limit uh, by using multiple drawing operations. So let's say we used to draw a large diameter blank into a much smaller cup, and we can do this by performing the drawing operation in multiple stages. So this is uh, this is uh, the, uh, this uh, slide here shows two examples of what I just described. So when we start from something um, like like the the cup here, and then we want to result to this uh, sprite can, we can understand the, that the um, the ratio of the initial diameter and the and we start let's say from a, from a blank. Let's have that in mind. So we want to change its diameter multiple times, and it makes sense. To, to perform multiple operations, drawing operations. In this case, it's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then further operations will be needed to uh, give shape to the to the can. Same thing on the other uh, figure down below. So each individual state shouldn't not exceed the drawability. So there is no way to overcome this uh, this limit. Uh, so in theory, one could say that, yes, let's say stay on the safe side and not, to not exceed the durability limit, but then, then this would have, um, I mean, by this, I mean, having multiple uh, operation uh, has got a financial penalty. So each, each new uh, drawing operation, uh, we can imagine it requires new tooling and a new setup and all these things are very expensive. So, um, as we, that this is this is a, a reason why uh, we can imagine that the um, uh, draw, deep drawing is a it, it has got a, a tremendous cost, and it, it's a it's a process actually it's a manufacturing process which is dedicated for large volume uh, uh, because it contains uh, a tremendous capital cost. But once it's set up, it can uh, produce multiple multiple components uh, at a time. So let's see now, uh, this slide demonstrates uh, the, um, the assembly that could be used for uh, redrawing. So we can see here, we have the first drawing, deep drawing um, operation, and then its successive operation requires a new punch and a new die. And then the new die will have to uh, have a smaller diameter than those used for the previous draw. And I think this is very reasonable. And this is what uh, is uh, depicted through this figure. So let's moving on now to the uh, next slide. So there are some mathematics involved uh, in the redrawing process. So let's consider a sequence of redrawing operations and uh, we where we start from a diameter of D naught and then in, we, uh, we are reaching, after each uh, operation, we are reaching the diameters of D1 to D2 until the final required product diameter of Dn is achieved. 
So redrawing will be successful, providing that no one of the draw ratios exceeds the drawability limit of the material, which means that we, um, you know, if we consider the, uh, the ratios of D0 over D1 for the first operation, D1 over D2 for the second, D2 over D3 for the third, and so on, so forth, until you reach the uh, Dn minus one over Dn, with the and being the final uh, product diameter, each uh, and every one of them must not exceed the drawability uh, limit. Uh, and yes, uh, as I uh, already dis described, uh, the denominator is the penultimate uh, diameter, uh, and the end is the uh, the denominator is the uh, final diameter of the product. So, uh, moving on to the next slide, we can have um, we see here the individual uh, reductions in multi-stage deep drawing. It follows that the uh, reduction for each stage of the process are the following, and in this, in this, um, I think I think I need to pause here and just um, highlight that um, and remind ourselves that drawability, we said it was the uh, limiting draw ratio to prevent tearing from uh, occurring, was the ratio of d naught over d one. Uh, <clears throat> And then reduction is a term uh, that uh, got presented to you yesterday in the previous lecture. And by definition, it is the, uh, the ratio of D naught minus D over D naught, which of course becomes one minus uh, D over D naught. And this is the formula here. This is the definition of reduction actually. However, this is the a formula for uh, the reduction for the first operation. This is the a reduction for the second operation. This is the third a reduction. And you can see me, I mean, this is repetition, but this is just to highlight that still it's the same, the same formula used there. And then until you get the final reduction, which is Rn equals to one minus Tn over Dn minus one. So, um, Sorry, uh, I'm missing the titles every time. Apologies for this uh, small pause in between the slides. So calculating now the total number of reductions required. Uh, of course, we, we so the total reduction is one minus dn uh, over d naught. So final over the initial, which can be decomposed to one minus the, the product of the individual reductions that were mentioned in the previous slide. So one minus D1 over D naught multiplied by D2 over uh, D1, uh, la, 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 multiplied by Dn over Dn minus one. So this is all very simple, just uh, making this long equation simpler. So it's one minus um, D1 over D naught, uh, assuming all reductions are equal. So. It is a good practice actually to assume it's a good a safe assumption because yeah, it is a good practice to, to, to consider that. So if that is the case, then yeah, this equation gets simplified to one min, uh, minus D one over D naught in the power of N. So, so if the durability initial and final diameters are known, then we have everything we need to calculate N. So an N, let's say, is the, the minimum number of operations uh, required uh, to achieve a final product. Um, so wh wh what is highlighted here is um, that uh, N has to be an integer and we have to round up because it's uh, safe to have more, like if it is, a, yeah, if it's not an integer already, we always round up. So we have to perform more operations rather than uh, fewer because fewer will be detrimental. So if we uh, round up, the same equation can be used to determine the working draw ratio. So let me just pause for a second and everything will be, um, uh, you will take some time. I, I would recommend taking some time to study this. It's very simple yet. So we do have the drawability, which is D naught over D1, uh, D2, whatever, per operation. 
we have got the draw ratio, which is the, um, so drawability refers to the limit. It's the limited uh, draw ratio. Draw ratio, what it is the actual one we need to calculate, calculate uh, and consider in this, in this uh, formula, uh, formulas that uh, are presented here. And then there is this N, which is um, the number of, uh, of operations we need to perform. And once we calculate that using the uh, formulas for the for the actual draw ratios, as uh, I call them here as a convention, then we can reuse the same equation using the final n value and uh, work out the, what we called working draw ratio. I just went through that again uh, to keep that in mind when we see the equations um, being used uh, in the example to follow. So using intermediate, uh, so let's move on to the next slide, which refers to the use of intermediate annealing heat treatments. So uh, the total reduction achievable in a series of drawing operation is also limited by ch changes in the material properties caused by work hardening. When several successive drawing operations are needed, it may be necessary to anneal the material at some uh, intermediate points in the process in order to remove work hardening. So um, let's say if, if we assume that R1 and R2 can be reductions for individual operations uh, or for a number of operations between, um, between anneals, and then um, if 50% reduction is possible between annealing becomes necessary, the total reduction achievable with a single annealing operation would be, as we see here in this, uh, in this uh, equation, it can be one minus uh, 50%, and then we anneal and we have another reduction, further reduction by 50%, which gives us a total reduction of 75%. So I didn't do anything uh, really uh, sophisticated here. It's just like when we re when we have fifty percent deduction, assuming no annealing, it would be the final the final um, the final uh, uh, product would be fifty percent uh, uh, reduced by having a second operation with the same amount of reduction. This is what we get. So, uh, but with one annealing in between. So if we extend that to the case where we could have uh, two anneals in between, then this is the reduction after without annealing. This is after the first annealing. This is after the uh, second annealing. And then we can have a reduction, which is uh, larger this time by 87.5%. Uh, uh, so we can see here that it is very possible uh, that uh, yeah, if, if originally we could uh, produce, have a pr final product that was uh, reduced, let's say in diameter by 50%, now we can extend this uh, to a further reduction just by introducing the annealing uh, process in between uh, operation stages. Again, drawability is, uh, is the limit, the governing uh, limit. So we cannot bypass that. So let's move now to the uh, to the example problem. So again, so this this example refers to uh, multiple operations. Uh, this photo here at the top is um, is indicative. Please do not get deceived by the number uh, of operations you you see here. This is only indicative. So the question is determine if a thin flat blank of sheet metal uh, having a, a, a diameter of three 20 millimeters can be drawn into a cylindrical cup-shaped object in three operations. So not quite as many as the component above, as I said before. So the question is, can these be formed into shape with three operations? And we have got some given uh, parameters and these are the, um, that the, the cup has to have the final product 25 millimeters diameter and uh, the drawability of the sheet, of the sheet is 1.8. Uh, and then the final question is how many drawing operations would you recommend to ensure a successful outcome? So let's start by examining whether three operations are enough to uh, uh, yeah, result in a, in a, in a, in a good uh, outcome. So 
starting by the calculation of maximum permissible draw ratio per operation. And we are given the initial diameter did not uh, be equal to 320 millimeters, final diameter DN equals to 25 millimeters. So the total required reduction, as we said, this is the definition, A is one minus DN over D naught. Uh, by substituting the values is 1 uh, minus 25 over 320, uh, which equals to uh, not uh, 0.922. So we are given that the drawability limit is 1.8, and we have a total uh, draw ratio of 12.8. Uh, so this appears out of nowhere, but this is actually, if you, yeah, if you substitute, the draw ratio is D naught over the N. So if you substitute and say 320 over 25, the, the, the number is 12.8. Uh, so clearly we need a number of uh, in, intermediate operations because we exceed this, uh, uh, we, we, we exceed the, the limit. So um, note that the total reduction is higher than the maximum normally achievable before annealing the emissions, uh, which is uh, should be 0.5 and 0.8. So uh, let's assume that for, uh, as I said before, it's a good assumption to assume that all drawing operations are made up to the drawability limit of 1.8 and take the process to, to its limits. So that would give us the n over the uh, n minus one equal to uh, one over 1.8, which equals to um, uh, 0 0.555. Move to the next slide. Sorry. So, uh, sorry. I lost my. So, this is the the calculation. The next slide is the calculation of the number of uh, drawing operations, and the total reduction is in that case uh, r equals one mi minus d n over d naught. Um, but as we said, if we have nine. Uh, uh, if the number of uh, uh, if the number of operations is n, then uh, and the 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 ratio is the same for each and every one of them, then we get to this uh, one uh, minus d one over d naught in the power of n, and then drawability is uh, d naught over d one. So if we substitute all the numbers we saw previously in the previous slides, we have got. Um, 0.922 equals 1 minus 1 over 1.8 in the power of n. So if we uh, solve for n, and uh, then we end up having n equal uh, to 4.34. And as I said before, this cannot be uh, an integer. It has to be, um, it, it, this, this has to be an integer. It cannot remain as 4.34. And we cannot round down because if we assume four operations, then we will exceed the, the limit, the drawability limit. So it's on the safe side to consider that we will uh, perform more operations than the number here. So uh, hence rounding up. So n, now equals to five because this is what uh, we calculated. So this answers the first question, how many uh, operations, if three operations is adequate and the answer is no, we need five. So let's proceed with the next one. Uh, the next question was whether we need to perform annealing. So even five drawing operations may be uh, problematic because as we said, it's, uh, um, so we need to anneal uh, after between 50 or 80 percent reduction, and we said we exceeded. We saw that we exceeded this uh, this percentage. So with five operations, the draw ratio for operation is given by the equation uh, below, which is r equals to uh, not uh, 0.922 equals to one minus d n uh, over d naught which again, by the same, same substitution. It's, so it's the same equation as I said before, but this time we are using uh, n being equal to what we calculated before, which is uh, the new value five, whereas before it was previously, it was an unknown value. And now this uh, gives us that uh, dn over dn minus one equals to um, 0.6. So let's assume that we insert an annealing operation after the third drawing operation, 
The reduction achieved after three operations is one minus um, 0.6 in the power of three equals to, uh, to 0.78. So this is 78%. So this is acceptable for some seed materials, but not all. And this uh, brings us to the, sorry, to the end of this, uh, this uh, worked example. So, um, I mean, you will have access to the, to the slides and I'm happy to discuss further, but, um, but I think I, we highlighted and covered the main points of these equations. Please bear in mind, it's not as complicated. It's just a matter of, um, of concept. The, co the equations are simple, but it's a matter of applying the concept correctly in the correct order to come up with the correct uh, examples. Um, sorry, uh, and uh, one point that maybe I, I just uh, went through too quickly was this uh, power of three. Power of three is what I, so when, when in the slide where I talked about annealing uh, operations, uh, every annealing would introduce a new, uh, a new value here to uh, uh, that was uh, multiplied by the previous one. So this is how, if we assume the same uh, 0.6 uh, that we calculate here for each uh, case, it's multiplied by three, which is the three operations. Then this is uh, what gives us the the, the result. Um, I would uh, prompt you to go through these example multiple, you know, slowly at your own time. Uh, and then try to prepare for tutorial three, where you will uh, solve a similar problem, uh, but you know the presentation will be uh, done very explicitly, and you will all have access to this uh, explicit presentation as well. So to wrap up this uh, this uh, lecture, I will summarize uh, in this uh, final slide. So the deep drawing process requires careful design of tooling to prevent defect formation. Wrinkling and tearing can be avoided up to a point by attention to black holder pressure and uh, lubrication. However, conditions that avoid one type can promote the other. Uh, fundamentally, the drawability is limited to a value in the range of 1.6 to 2.2. Total draw ratios that exceed the drawability limit must be achieved by multiple operations. Seed metals also uh, have a limit on the reduction that can be achieved before annealing uh, is required between drawing operations. And the mathematics required for determining the numbers of free draws can also be applied to determining the number of free draws permitted between annealing operations. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's the end of the presentation. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen, uh, turn my video on. And um, if any, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourselves and we will be happy to, to, to answer these uh, questions. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you don't have any questions, uh, yeah. Thank you all for your uh, attention and collaboration. Uh, please feel free to post any questions in the discussion board on Blackboard, mm. and we will keep an eye on that and try answer them as uh, promptly as possible. And uh, of course, we don't forget the drop-in session on this, uh, this uh, Wednesday, right, Professor Smith? That's right, yes. So tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. I'll be available to discuss um, well, obviously, this week's pair of lectures, um, but also uh, anything else that comes from the whole set of five lectures, because next Monday we're moving on to welding, which is a completely new con new subject. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can I ask how do we figure out how many times you need to um, anneal? How many times the annealing occurs? You need to avoid a total reduction of more than that limit of 60 to 80 percent. So if you do a series of draws, um, each draw is at that draw ratio you've calculated, then you'll be able to work out the reduction uh, during that set of three, total reduction over that set of, say, three draws, which is what Anastasia worked out. Um, 
effectively what you're saying is you have to do an anneal every time your reduction reaches the limit. Uh, once you, if you've got 12 draws, um, each of which is at the limiting draw ratio, say, then you'll actually have to think about, well, okay, is it three? You know, if, if each, if, 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 if do three draws give me this reduction, the four draws give me this reduction, it turns out that it's only three and you've got 12 draws, you're going to have to anneal every three draws. It turns out it's four to reach that reduction, then uh, it, you have to do it less often because the, the, the anneal resets the clock on the reduction, effectively. You're starting again. So you restart the whole calculation from the beginning on the reduction side of it. That's correct, yes. Yes, because the reduction is effectively looking at the total amount of average strain you've done in the material. The draw ratio is looking at the worst conditions somewhere in your draw. So because you are, when you redraw, you're not actually putting the maximum strain in at the same place you put the maximum strain in before, because you're doing a smaller diameter punch, which is why you can you can get away with it. Um, you're effectively move. You're, you're saying, I got close. You know, I I haven't necked anywhere, uh, but I don't want to continue to concentrate strain in the area where I would neck. So I need to stop, redraw with a smaller diameter thing, so that I'm putting the maximum strain in somewhere else in the structure. So they're looking at slightly different things. Does that make sense? I think so. I'm going to go over it again. But... Yeah, go away and think about it and then come back tomorrow and ask again if it makes any sense. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Alex. Oh, Alex. Yeah. Hello. Um, my question is, is there any consequences to multiple annealing processes? Not if you do them properly. <laughs> okay. So... You, you have to be, you're, you're right, if, 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 if you do it wrong, you could imagine that you could end up with a situation where you actually have changed something other in the material than just recrystallizing it. Um, but the sorts of materials that you perform this on, they wouldn't be that kind of material. Uh, if you had a material where you mucked up the precipitate distributions by cooking it for too long, then yes, you're right, something could go wrong there. Um, but basically the heat treatments that you do have to be quite carefully designed so that they don't have adverse consequences as well as the ones you're looking for. Um, okay, thanks. Lewis. Um, hello, yeah. I, I was just wondering to figure out uh, the ideal uh, time in the drawing to anneal is that is that when we get take the draw ratio per operation and then we just sort of put it to the power we yeah. approximately and then we just find when it's below 80 yeah that's right you say it's based, this is this very much a sort of finger in the air calculation saying you know at what point do i need to think about actually putting a heat treatment cycle in otherwise uh you know i'll do another draw and something will tear somewhere um all right, I see. Thank you. Yeah, we're more awake today. Yesterday had nobody had any questions at all. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's one hour earlier in the day. Um... Yeah, but I was I was thinking, I mean, like, yeah, uh, what, what, you, what, what uh, the questions were about, about yeah, you cannot keep having multiple drawing operations forever because you uh, introduce uh, way more strain and then you hit the uh, UTS limit again and it's uh, detrimental to the material. Same way you don't have, want to have uh, to keep uh, heat treating forever because uh, there are side effects to that as well. So, okay. So, if we've got no more questions, um... Thanks, Anastasia, for delivering the lecture. Um, it, it, in case you're interested as to why Anastasia has done the lecture today, is that when, when you're a junior academic um, in the university, part of your training is in delivering teaching. And so uh, she, you know, Anastasia has delivered this lecture today as part of her training so that she can then assess how she did. Um, 
and um and thank you for taking part yeah <laughs> thanks anastasia thank you all and yeah if you if you if there is any feedback for this session and or for the tutorials that uh i've been delivering please uh let me know i would like to to, to improve and enhance uh, for future uh lectures thank you all thank you very much professor smith as well okay so i'll end i'll end the session now and i might see some people tomorrow <laughs> right so i will